，行，我到你的手上，不然你得不了。OK， 嗯、um, ，Good morning。So、um, my name is David Zhang. So marketing director of the Opera Cloud and NFI from ZT. So actually, um, ZT, everybody know here ZT. So ZT is one of the leader in the telecommunication solution area. So ZT telecommunication solution has been widely used in operators. More, by more than two country, 200 countries and the regions. So we are not only have our hardware, but also we have the full set of the open infrastructures. For example, ZT own OpenStack distributions. So today, I come to here to share ZT a 5G ready for mixed on demand cloud infrastructure solutions for you, because 5G is coming. So it brings out a lot of requirements on the cloud infrastructure, how to build a 5G-ready cloud infrastructure solutions for 5G services is the challenges. OK, so today my presentation will divide into two parts. First part is some trend, evolution, drivers, and et cetera. Second part is technical aspects, how to understand this formix, how to understand this on demand. OK, so first. Page 5G is coming. So today I'm here. I'm not one that's talking about what is 5G or why we need 5G. I want to emphasize that is 5G is coming. The 5G new services, for example, the URLC or enhanced mobile broadband, it figure out the new requirement to the infrastructures like the low latency, high bandwidth, high speed. And etc. Something from the machine, machine talking, machine communications. Okay, this kind of requirement bring an impact, require changes on the cloud infrastructures. I think nowadays, okay, most of the, your cloud infrastructures is centralized, right? You deploy everything in a centralized database or two centralized database with active standby or geo redundancies. Your cloud EPC, your cloud IMS, your cloud OS, SBSS, or your IT systems, centralized. But due to the different requirement on the latency, on the bandwidth, on the speed, the centralized deployment is not, no longer fulfill all the service scenarios. We are looking for a multi-layer distributed cloud infrastructure architectures. So today I'm emphasizing a distributed cloud infrastructures. But what are the key technologies or key characteristics for this kind of distributed cloud infrastructure? How to understand this? OK, let's see these pictures. OK, I will assume that is the network, the cloud infrastructures will be a hierarchical architectures divided into maximum three layers. First, we will have the core cloud. OK, you deploy a centralized element latency insensitive element in this core cloud. For example, your PCF, SMF in 5G, and our gateway control plane in the core site. And also we have edge data center and access data center. So, so you can deploy different kinds of applications in different level of data center. For example, let's talk about access data center. Access data center, we will assume is most close to the subscribers, provide the best, the lowest latency, best bandwidth. What kind of elements? For example, your cloud RAN. Your cloud RAN control plane, multi-edge access control services, and a UPF, the packet plane in 5G services. This kind of services has extreme requirements on the latency bandwidth. We should deploy them mostly close to the subscribers. And something we deploy in between. So I'm, I'm talking about three level data centers. But it is not a strict regulations. Maybe if you say, okay, your country is not big enough, maybe you only have core cloud and access cloud, or even your country is really small enough, maybe you only have one. But I'm talking about in China, so China is quite big. They may have three level data centers. So totally say it's a hierarchical data center architectures, right? And also for each data center in core site, you have generic hardware. It is x68 platform, or ARM platform, and etc. And you have centralized management system. You have uh, multiple resource pool management, cross vendor, cross private cloud, public cloud. And also you have 
the AI AI based O&M tools, right? And also in Edge, you are not only have the generic hardware, maybe you also have some accelerator. For example, the GPU, FPGA, SmartNIC, in this way to provide a better performance. And also in the Edge data center, you are also not only common hardware, the accelerator, but also you have different kinds of hardware. For example, some integrated hardware, all-in-one node, multi-node hardware, different kinds of hardware to fit in the limitation of edge access data centers. Also, for the OpenStack point of view, okay, in the access side or edge side, you are not looking for a full set of OpenStack installations. You expect maybe some lightweighted OpenStack installation to save resource, save CPU core, save memory, save your disk space, right? So, do everything, deploy everything as demand, right? So this is the full picture of ZT understanding on a distributed cloud infrastructures. So later on in the next few slides, I will put a little detail and emphasize the most important key technical aspects. Okay, let's have an overview. What is ZT we call the full mix on demand distributed cloud infrastructure looks like? How to understand its full mix? First is mixed operation maintenance approach, automation and intelligence on demand. You may have different in the whole life cycle of the network. You will have um, software installation, software upgrading, do daily operation maintenance, okay, optimization, right, end to end. We have end to end operation maintenance tools to make your network management to be automation and intelligence. And also this is AI engine based. Right? So you can choose an O&M approach as you demand. Okay? Second is deployment on scale, on demand. Okay? You can install a full set of cloud platform here, but also you can install a lightweight OpenStack here, or even computer storage OpenStack merged in one node. So this is flexible deployment mode on demand. Depends on what kind of location, what kind of data center, what kind of service you would like to deploy. Right? And also, uh, diff mixed acceleration scenarios. We will say, okay, the acceleration, the CPU is not enough now. So we are looking for the GPU, FPGA, and OpenStack community. There is some project, some projects is ongoing to focus on this kind of acceleration scenarios, right? So ZT, we are make a lot of contribution and efforts on the hardware acceleration, how to manage a different kind of the accelerator, how to make compatible with different accelerator, and how to open this capability to the up layer applications. Okay, we have different, manage a different capability of accelerations. You can use on demand. And also a mixed cloud resource pose. You may not only have virtual machine bare metal, but also you have a containers, Kubernetes, right? You are not only have ZT resource pools, but also you may have other vendors, Red Hat, other vendors, OpenStack, or even resource pool from VMware. And nowadays, we are, some operators are talking about, do we really need or necessary to deploy the virtualized EPC, virtual IMS on top of the public cloud, right? And also, this is, I, I think this would be one technical trend. It's possible from a technical point of view. And nowadays, in this way, you need to manage the public cloud resources like Amazon, like Ali Cloud. So we should, from a cloud management point of view, you should have these such capabilities. So it is a private cloud, public cloud, heterogeneous management. So you can choose a cloud resource type on demand, whatever container, whatever bare metal, whatever ZT, whatever third party, whatever Amazon, whatever private cloud, whatever public cloud, right? So this is full mix understanding. So first mix, just now I mentioned, you can not only manage ZT Cloud here, ZT Cloud include ZT Virtual Machine, bare metal and container, okay, but also you can manage the VMware, third party OpenStack, or even public cloud, Amazon resource. One cloud management up to manage all type of the cloud resources. So this is a very powerful cloud management engines. This is totally complete designed by ZT. And also, Second, you are looking for maybe, okay, now you heard a lot of things. For example, the Kubernetes over OpenStack, OpenStack over Kubernetes. Okay, you have virtual machine, you have bare metal, you have containers. 
we are also looking for a solutions to deploy Kubernetes over OpenStack. We can use a unified OpenStack management framework to manage the virtual machine, to manage the container, to manage the bare metals. So we, because OpenStack has more than a lot of years, right? So, so Kubernetes maybe is young, still young. So we can use some OpenStack mature modules introduced into the Kubernetes. Then we can have a better maturity, better Kubernetes built on OpenStack to build on services. So this is what we call dual course drive. Kubernetes, OpenStack, dual could drive the service innovations. All right, um, how do you understand this demand, uh, deployment on demand? Okay, this is also easy to understand. First, you may have a centralized OpenStack deployed in your central data centers. Okay, but for your edge data centers or the access data centers, you're looking for maybe white, lightweight OpenStack, or you adopt some OpenStack cell v2 deployment. You deploy a local message queue or Nova cell node in each data center, or even you use the available Zoom mode. Everything managed by your centralized data centers. So different kinds of approach, different kinds of alternatives enable you to have a flexible deployment on the OpenStack itself. To save your energy, complete set or a lightweight set or even nothing here to manage by the centralized one. It's very flexible to fulfill your diversified requirement, right? And also for the containers, last just now I mentioned the dual course. We can, you can deploy containers in virtual machine. You can deploy containers on the bare metals. All the bare metal and the virtual machine resources will be unified managed by the OpenStack. So OpenStack will be the unified resource management for, con for the virtual machine for the bare metal. So you can also build the container on the bare metal and in the virtual machine. So this will do core drive. But of course, you can choose if I don't, I don't need OpenStack. Because OpenStack occupies resources, right? You can deploy everything directly on the bare metal. It's also possible here, right? You can deploy everything directly on the Kubernetes. There's no OpenStack at the bottom, right? So acceleration, right? So nowadays, we have different scenarios to, to enable you to have accelerations. For example, some 5G RAN, NFE accelerations, the 5G core network accelerations, or even NFE accelerations, a lot of scenarios. So CPU is not enough. Now we must introduce GPU, FPGA, or MP, and it's a really third-party accelerator into your network. The OpenStack, the ATTAX, should manage this kind of accelerators, this kind of third-party hardware. And ZT, we have the cooperation with my colleague Intel. So we adopt their FPGA and with this kind of hardware to provide this kind of acceleration capability to the up layer services. For example, for example, we are talking about a SBC. Do you know SBC session board controller? This is one element in the IMS. ZT make a test, a trial, that is, Nowadays, we use Intel CPU to do the transcoding, but we found it's not cost performance solutions. But we do use GPU. We found, okay, if we talk about transcoding, the efficiency of one GPU is equal to around 107 CPU cores. So use GPU to do the transcoding is a cost effective, cost performance solutions in the NFE solutions. So the OpenStack, you should manage the GPU and open this GPU capability to the up layer services. The SPC is one kind of services. Or we're talking about another kind of acceleration. We call it OVS or flow up acceleration for the gateway or the UPF. We use FPGA-based SmartNix to do the accelerations. We are no longer fully depends on the CPU-based OVS packet forwardings. We found, okay, if one FPGA, the efficiency of one FPGA-based smart link plus two core is almost equal to the performance provided by the 12 intercores, it's up to the 40, 30 gigab gigabit. So it is also a cost-effective solution if we adopt smart link on FPGAs. Okay, next my colleague, my, my friend, Intel, Mr. Ding, will share the Intel product portfolio here. Thank you, Mr. Deng. Uh, 
Mr. John just mentioned in ZTE's uh, uh, 5G infrastructure, there's a lot of utilization of uh, Intel's uh, accelerator devices. Uh, for this, this part, I will uh, talk about uh, all the, uh, most of the Intel accelerator devices uh, products. Uh, we are across all the computing network and storage areas. Uh, for the computing, we can say uh, uh, recently we have uh, released the latest uh, uh, generation of the Intel Xeon platform for high performance computing. And also we have some uh, uh, GPU uh, de devices uh, integrated with the Xeon platform also. This is a, uh, and also in the computing area, we have uh, some uh, FP devices. As we know uh, uh, here, this is the uh, two generation of the FPG devices. It's uh, Atera 18 and uh, S10. The, 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 the two generation products, very uh, uh, FB devices can help a lot in the F, uh, F, uh, 5G infrastructure setup, we know. Uh, in the networking part, we have uh, the product of a SmartNIC, like this. A SmartNIC here is, uh, that's the uh, integrated FPG chip inside the NIC devices. And the, uh, the FPG devices can do a lot of uh, networking package processing, offloading prefecture to increase the performance of the networking bandwidth a lot. And the storage. In the storage area, we have uh, some uh, several different type of uh, devices. Uh, this, one, this one is uh, uh, the standard uh, AF, uh, NVMe uh, interfaced uh, SSD card. Uh, it's, uh, we, the, the product name, we call it uh, the NVMe interface uh, uh, SSD devices. And the, this one is uh, very important. Uh, we call it Op10DC persisted memory. It's the interface, the hardware interface, the, the DIMM, DIM interface in the platform board, the same as the memory uh, chip. So it can provide a very high bandwidth uh, for the storage also. And uh, the performance is uh, also... Okay. Uh, and also the, uh, the cap uh, capacity will be very large uh, to some several, for example, the 2T for the whole uh, platform uh, for the persistent memory. Okay, that's all for the introduction. Thank you very much. So, um, thank you, Ms. Ding. Um, so, let's come to the last two minutes, okay? So, we come to the last mix, the mixed O&M automation and intelligence on demand. Actually, um, ZT can also provide end-to-end -end operation maintenance tools across the whole life cycle of a project. For example, when you're trying to do the installation upgrade, when you're trying to do the operation inspection, we're trying to do some intelligence watching, fault management, log analysis. For each approach, each step, we have a dedicated tool to enable you to have network automation and intelligence. And also, okay, all these tools behind it is an AI engine driven. So we collect different performance data, logs, alarms from the AT equipment, from the AT environment, from third party environment, computer storage node, and onto a centralized AI driven engine there. We have offline training, knowledge base, online analysis, big data database, and machine learning to learn, okay, what is the situation of the healthy? Detection exceptions, root course analysis, capacity forecast and optimization, automatic closed loop scaling out, and self-heating based on the alarm. So it's totally end-to-end -end closed loop. This kind of AI, AI drive to operation maintenance engine can enable you to, to, to release your efforts, right? To have a full network automation and intelligence. So this is all what I want to introduce today. So it is for mix on demand distributed cloud infrastructure from ZT. So many thanks everybody here. So thank you. <laughs>